Well, since I know this album is basically blocked, um, and I've already done Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowlands, we're going to take our time with this one. We really are. <laughs> we're going to have it done by the end of the month, but um, I'm definitely going to not do like four freaking track ones that are just blocked, and then it's annoying, man. Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. We are back with two tracks from uh, the master himself, Bob Dylan. Uh, we are continuing our journey through Blonde on Blonde uh, on Patreon <laughs> for a couple days at least. Hopefully it'll be up by like Friday or Saturday. Uh, we're doing two tracks today. The next two tracks, we did Visions of Johanna and well, the first three tracks last week, we're doing track four and track five today, which is uh, One of Us Must Know Sooner or Later and I Want You. And I believe I read that the first track, uh, One of Us Must Know, was the only track that he did with the Hawks as his backing band. Is that what it said? Um, so recording sessions began in New York in uh, October 65 with numerous backing musicians, including members of Dylan's live backing band, the Hawks. Um, those sessions continued until 66. Um, they yielded only one track that made it on to the final album, which is the first track we're listening to today. So I'm guessing this one might be a little bit different than the rest. I don't know, but I'm excited to check this out. And this is courtesy of our alpha patron, Joel. As always, thank you, Joel. You rock, my friend. Um, I'm excited. To continue on Patreon. <laughs> Hopefully it'll get up, man. I don't know. I think they fixed the whole Bob Dylan, you know, CSAC situation or whatever. So hopefully it'll be maybe unblocked. Who knows? All right. One of us must know sooner or later by Bob Dylan. And if you want to get a video just like this, join our Patreon. It's in the description. $15 tier or if you get one for your request a month. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's it. I'm done. Three, two, one, go. I'm trying to fit it all in one little section. I got an ad sponsor coming too next week. I didn't mean to treat you so bad. You shouldn't take it so personal. I didn't mean to make you so sad. You just happened to be there, that's all When I saw you say goodbye to your friend and smile I thought that it was well understood That you'd be coming back in a little while I didn't know that you were saying goodbye for good You're supposed to do wow. Sooner or later One of us must know That I really did Try to get close to you I couldn't see What you could show me your scarf, it kept your mouth well hid I couldn't see How you could know me But you said you knew me And I believed you did Been there. When you whispered in my ear Asked me if I was leaving with you or her I didn't realize just what I did hear I didn't realize how young you were Watch out, Bob But sooner or later One of us must know you're just doing what you're supposed to do Sooner or later One of us must know That I really did try to get close to you This is awesome I couldn't see 
When it started snowing Your voice was all that I heard I couldn't see Where we were going He's a true bard, man. He really is. But you said you knew and I took your word. A traveling troubadour. Or Wilbur. And then you told me later as I apologized that you were just kidding me. You weren't really from the farm. Maggie's farm? And I told you as you clawed out my eyes that I never really meant to do you any harm But sooner or later one of us must know that you just did what you're supposed to do Sooner or later one of us must know that I really did try to get close to you Every time. It's like a gut punch. He knows exactly when to use it. I want you. The guilty undertaker sighs. The lonesome organ grinder cries. The silver saxophones say, I should refuse you. The cracked bells and washed out horns blow into my face with scorn But it's not that way I wasn't born to lose you I want you I want you I want you so bad Honey, I want you The drunken politician leaps Upon the street where mothers weep And the saviors who are fast asleep They wait for you And I wait for them to interrupt Me drinking from my broken cup And ask me to open up the gate for you I want you I want you Yes, I want you so bad I love that Honey, I want you Now my fathers, they've gone down True love, they've been without it But all their daughters put me down Cause I don't think about it Well, I return to the queen of spades And talk with my chambermaid She knows that she's not afraid to look at her She is good to me and there's nothing she doesn't see she knows where i'd like to be but it doesn't matter i want you i want you yes i want you so bad honey i want you now your dancing child with his chinese suit he spoke to me i took his flute no i wasn't very cute to him was I but I did it because he lied and because he took you for a ride and because time is on his side and because I want you I want you yes I want you so bad honey I want you this whole album just feels like love songs in a way there he goes. Well, that was a great little, basically eight minutes right there of Bob Dylan. Um, I usually do it like three at a time or four at a time at most, but 
I felt like since it's blocked, we got a month to do it. Might as well take our time and enjoy it. Um, I don't want to rush through the albums either, you know, because I've noticed when I do it, like four songs and four songs or, you know, whatever, it's it's usually over pretty quick, you know. Um, I'm kind of the guy that likes to <laughs> string things along in a way, just so you can actually have more time with certain songs instead of like whole chunks of them, you know, like, and it's hard for me to really recap four songs because my brain just works like, I remember the last song that we listened to basically maybe the one before it you know by the time I, I get to the end of the fourth track uh, track one's basically gone you know what I mean not like gone but for me to actually have like decent analysis and stuff like I, if I had like a pen and paper I could write it down like maybe I should start taking notes on my phone but then I'd be looking down you know so it's just hard man and I'm not you guys know this is all off the cuff I don't write anything down you know this is all just me spewing <laughs> after listening to the song basically um I think mean, that's why you guys like it too. Um, it's uh, Bob is really good at writing like love songs, but very uh, there's so much nuance in them, and there's so much more to it than just like the love aspect of it. Um, I don't know if he, he's talking about uh, Sarah. I think right. My, I don't quote me. I could be wrong because um, that was the sad-eyed lady of the Lowlands, and that's the last track on the album. So I don't know if he's talking about like multiple lovers or. Or what, you know, or he's talking about, you know, the same one that, that, the, um, that we end up with at the end, um, since I've already heard Sad Eyed Lady. And um, I definitely want to re-examine it, because I heard that song way early in my Dylan career, shall we say. Um, I've got two full albums under my belt now, you know, and of some singles and other stuff. So... I have a I have a way better grasp than I did than like I, I think it went for Mr. Tambourine Man, which is still like my favorite song, the Newport Jazz Festival one or whatever it is. Um, we went from that to Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowlands, so I think that was a big jump, and I didn't fully understand him yet. You could go watch a video if you want. I think I I don't trash the song in any way, but I basically end up with the with the. the the summary is that I didn't like it, basically. It was too long, too tedious, didn't like it, didn't blah, 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 you know. Um, but I did like parts of it, you know. And uh, that's not how I feel anymore with this music because I, I had to look at it from a different approach. It's not all about the instruments with Dylan, you know. But with this, honestly, they played a huge part, you know. I feel like almost these are two songs alone, the instrumental almost uh, held as much salt as his vocals and, no, well, not the harmonica. The harmonica is unbeatable. Um, but the instrumental was super important here, um, especially with the first one with the Hawks, right? So that was, um, God, they're all singles. There's so many singles. All right. So fourth track on Blonde on Blonde, uh, it was written by Dylan and produced by Bob Johnson. It is the narrator's account of a burned out relationship. Um, okay. All right. Um, it peaked at number 33 in the UK. It reached 119 on in the US. Um, reviewers at the time were of the singles release afforded it a largely negative reception with Dylan's vocal performance as a particular focus of disapproval. Later critical assessments have been more positive. Um, that's usually what happens with like genius level people because he was on another level than most folks back then. Yeah, let's be honest, you know, I think everybody well, not everybody. There was a certain select group of people that were starting to awaken. <laughs> Cue the yes music and like the, <laughs> you know what I mean? Rick Wakeman. Um, it's, um, I don't know. Uh, people were waking up and um, it was a certain group as the hip, you know, the hippies, whatever you want to call it, counterculture movement. People were awakening to uh, the lie, the facade basically that's around us. And um, then they went back to sleep once consumerism hit. Because everyone was like, ooh, shiny, you know, and then let's buy everything. Oh, money, money, honey. <sighs> Thanks, you know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you get there and you get to my my era and, like, we're just balls deep in uh, consumerism. And uh, it's, I'm not even going to go down that path. It don't fucking matter. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like I, I missed out, bro. Like, I'm an awakened individual. I would like to think I am. I could be totally asleep, though. That's how I know that I'm somewhat awakened, because I could easily see myself as being asleep, too. That's fine. Everyone's awake at their own level, basically. And it just keeps going. It's this endless staircase of, of, of ascension, basically. And we're never going to get to the top. 
if you've ever played Mario 64, which I doubt you have, but if you uh, try to go up the castle stairs, you never can get to the top if you don't have 70 stars. It's just how it works. I feel like that's the same way in life, you know? Like, we just keep climbing the staircase, this Tower of Babel that we've created, basically, and then we just kind of fall back down the stairs, and then we try to climb back up, and we fall back down the stairs. You know, it's just like this endless loop-de-loop, -loop, you know, this, I don't even know what to call it. Whatever those things are at the psychiatrist's office to go, t -t 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 -t, basically that, you know? <laughs> That's what our reality in our life, and even to the micro, like our country, and it all expands. That's what people don't understand. T things aren't linear, and there's micro, and there's macro. There's the big picture, there's the little picture, and then there's the picture in between. And I think Bob was on the bigger picture level, and he was very good at writing nuanced takes on his own life and his own experience, and um, I think that's wonderful. Like uh, He's probably one of the best writers I've ever encountered on here, obviously, and a lot of it's probably above my pay grade at some points, I'm not going to lie, and it's all about... When it's music like this, like it's it's definitely instrumentally focused, but it's more, you know, lyrically focused and more of a narrative than anything, you know? It's not like an overarching narrative, but it's like the narrative within the song. And I think Dylan just, he thrives. He thrives in these like single song setup sort of things where he just completely, uh, what's the word? Fabulizes almost, like, a, like an encounter or a person, and he just spells it out for you, basically. And you take your own interpretation home with you basically and i think that's wonderful um i i, I did i definitely got the burnt out lover part of that first song um you could feel it um and then it said for the instrumental people all right so it was al cooper i knew it on organ rick danko on bass bobby Gregg on drums paul griffin on piano robbie robertson on electric guitar and bob dylan on vocals and electric guitar and that was uh one of us must know. Oh, yeah, and Queen Jane approximately was the B-side. Interesting. Um, so then we go back to that. So I would definitely say that the guitar, um, the kind of interplay between the organ from Al Cooper and Robbie on the guitar was fantastic. And then, of course, Dylan was great, dude. Dylan's always great. I, I don't even have to say that. You know, you guys already know. Um, then I want you... Uh, the law is basically the song has been interpreted as a straightforward expression of lust although critics have highlighted that the symbolism of the song is complex it was the last song recorded for blonde on blonde with several takes recorded in the early hours of march 10th 1966. um it has received a largely positive critical reception with a number of commentators highlighting dylan's use of imagery although some of the meanings are obscure i would agree i would agree with that uh, summation um very obscure um, but that's so funny that the second one got largely positive critical reception, but the first one didn't. They felt very similar, but two different sort of sides of it, you know? Um, it was almost like the first side was love and like burnt, because even burnt out love is still a form of love, you know? It's just you're burnt out on it. The second side of it was like the lust side. It's like, you know, the yin and the yang of what things can be. It's all about how you use it, you know? Um it's like AA, like I always say, you know, it's always good to go in and get what you need and get out, you know, don't get chained to anything, you know, um, unless it's something that you want to be chained to something that's good for you to be chained to, which I, it's very rare for those things to come around like children, spouse, whatever. A, a, I'm not going to say a good job because you guys know I fucking hate money, bro. <laughs> I hate it so much. And that that's such a first world problem that someone like me can say that, you know? And I was literally, you guys don't even know, even a year ago, like I, I was barely uh, affording a place to live a year ago. How times change. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally just stuck my nose in the fucking dirt and I said, I'm going to keep working at this until it, until it works. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. And, um, I found some moderate success. You know, there's always roadblocks. There's always hurdles, but God damn, do I have a great community behind me, bro? Like, seriously, I'm so fucking lucky. I could have like a bunch of trolls. I could have a bunch of shitholes on here. Just, you know, fucking with me, you know, whatever. It could be a ton of different stuff, man. The internet is a ruthless fucking place. And I put myself out there a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like more than most people do. There's plenty of ammo that people could use if they watched my videos. You know what I'm saying? Like there, I get so personal and so in depth with things that um, I'm, I, I kind of do probably do to myself a disservice more than anything. But I think it helps people. I think it helps me on a different level as well. 
And um, I'm just so thankful for you guys. Sorry for getting a little sappy. It's just the music, you know. Dylan really does bring the best out of me, I feel like. Um, it didn't always be... It wasn't always... It didn't always be that way. It wasn't always that way, but... I've come to love this dude. I really have because he's just so deep. He thinks so deeply about things and I can relate to him because I think deeply about the dumbest shit. You know what I'm saying? I have that much brain power and just extra shit going on in my head that I can devote my brain power to some stupid shit. Like we are so lucky. We are so entitled and we are so comfortable. And what are we going to do when we get punched in the mouth later this year? It's going to happen. I'm letting you guys know it's going to happen. It's, this year is not going to end well. It's not. <laughs> I, I laugh just because I'm scared, honestly. And that's what they want you to be. They want you to be scared, honestly. That's what they do. But I'm more afraid for them. I'm pointing to like my family because they're in the other room. But um, because I could give a fuck less about myself, unfortunately. I'm still not there yet. But worried about them. And I'm worried about our country, you know? And it's just going to devolve into a bunch of fucking partisan nonsense. That's what's going to happen. And I hate it so much. I hate our system. I hate our government and what we do. Like it's so corrupt, bro. And it's so sad. And I'm not saying we ever weren't corrupt. Like go back to like William McKinley, bro. Like they're, they're every, not every president, but uh, every 150 years, uh, not 150, every 50 to 100 years, Milton Fillmore. I mean like they're not, well, Fillmore is okay. Um, who is the one Not Taft? Who was the, it was, was it McKinley? And then it was, um, who was World War One? Oh, fuck. Everyone hates him. What's his name? Wilson. Oh, Wilson. Oh, he was a bad one. We've had some pretty bad presidents. You know what I'm saying? But it's like a CEO of a company, basically, because that's what the United States is. We are a corporation. Sorry to break it to you, but I'm pretty sure you guys already knew that. Um, it's, it, it's just a shock for a lot of young people when they realize that all the stuff they were fed as children is all bullshit. You know what I mean? It's a bitter pill to fucking swallow once you realize it. And I'm getting that feeling in my chest I get when I'm on a rant. Um, it, and it, it's so sad, man, because this country is so beautiful and the people are so wonderful deep down. They really are. And um, I think everyone just wants everyone to succeed and be happy, you know, and to just be able to live their lives however they want, you know. But sometimes that just doesn't work out, you know, because there is a certain way that people should try to try. I don't know. It's the whole, you know, social code, moral code, whatever you want to call it, man. And I've been sitting here yapping. I'm so sorry, bro. But it, it stuff inspires me. I was like a fucking eight minute video. Jesus, Lee. Oh, my God. Um, But, you know, Dylan is just fantastic, bro. I, I'm just going to leave all my bullshit at that. I just sometimes I get on one, as they say, and I just can't let it go. Um, but I just wish that, you know, people my age could actually be proud of their country and be happy, be, you know, patriotic, even though they try to stomp that out of us, you know, the whole net, they call it nationalism. It's called patriotism. That's what we call it in America. Freedom fries, motherfucker. See you later.